bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, even on Monday. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is Monday. It's August 12th. Now, we're not going to do anything different today. We're going to focus in on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks every day. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market. There is no lack of penny stocks. And while I'm trading, I'm keeping my eye open for a hot penny stock, a penny stock that has potential to make us money. And yes, I've got one for us. This is ticker TLS, Telos Corporation. Now I found this stock by looking at the charts, which honestly is where I find most of my hot penny stocks. I find it a lot quicker and easier to find heat in a chart than I can in filings and press releases. First off, I can see a lot of charts in a little amount of time. And since I'm looking for a particular setup, I can see heat in a chart in just a glance. So when I find a chart that has heat, then I'll take the time to rummage around through the press releases and the filings of that particular company, looking for some hot news. If you can find hot information to match your hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And that's what caught my attention was her chart. Now, it isn't exactly the kind of charts I'm always looking for. We're looking at a recovery rebound chart right now. Last week, the company came out with financials and they were okay. They weren't that bad, but they obviously weren't that good because the stock fell 50%. Unbelievable. Overkill by a long shot, folks. She is rebounding now. She's taking back some of those gains, but there's still more sitting on the table. So I think it's a good idea to take a look at TLS right now before she recovers at all. So TELUS Corporation, she finished the day at $2.62.5. She was up just a little over 31% today. Now, this is a penny stock on the major exchange. She's on the NASDAQ, which comes with benefits compared to the OTC. First off, stocks on the major exchange are free to trade. No transaction fees involved. You can trade pre-market, aftermarket. You never, ever get to do that with OTC. There's a heck of a lot more money and volume on the major exchange. That's where you want to be trading. And there's a lot more rules on the major exchange. These companies have to jump through hoops all the time. They are being watched by a lot of different organizations. Bottom line, that's keeping our investments safe. So what is TLS all about? And to get that information, we're just going to dive into the most recent news press. They tell us here that Telos Corporation empowers and protects the world's most security conscious organizations with solutions for continuous security assurance of individuals, systems, and information. Telos's offerings include cybersecurity solutions for IT risk management and information security, as well as cloud security solutions to protect cloud-based assets and enable continuous compliance with industry and government security standards. Now, this is a big deal, folks. All of us give personal information to companies and organizations. Well, where do you think they put our personal information? up in the cloud. So cloud security is a big deal for all of us. They also deal with enterprise security solutions. This is for identity and access management, secure mobility, organizational messaging, and network management and defense. The company serves commercial enterprises, regulated industries, and government customers around the world. So this is a global corporation. Now, the company is involved with different products and services, but right now, everything they're talking about and everything we're going to be talking about is the TSA PreCheck. TSA PreCheck is a Department of Homeland Security trusted traveler program that allows enrolled travelers expedited screening through airport security. TSA PreCheck lanes are located at more than 200 airports with over 90 airlines participating. Since TSA first launched the TSA PreCheck application program as a DHS trusted traveler program for low risk travelers in December of 2013, active membership in the program has grown to more than 20 million passengers. Wow! Now what they've got is an app, but the app is just for scheduling an appointment at a brick and mortar building. They've got a lot of them and they're putting a lot more of them out there. It's like a DMV. You have to come in person and they will take care of all the validating of your information. 
cost you $85. You do this once every five years. And this is a big deal, folks. This gets you through security a lot quicker. Instead of going in that line that you're in for over an hour, taking off your coat, putting up your computer, emptying out your luggage, you don't have to do any of that. They get you through in less than 10 minutes. Now let's take a look at the news. So we're only going to scroll back to the end of June when the company tells us that they are set to join the Russell 3000 index. Now this is a big deal. They should be getting on the Russell at the end of the year. Now the Russell index is an ETF just like the SPY, but the SPY chooses 500 top companies. The Russell chooses 3000 top companies and they break the Russell down into two separate ETFs, the Russell 1000, which is the top largest 1000 companies. And then the smaller 2000 go in the Russell 2000. And what this does is it gives more exposure to the company, more credibility, and usually you end up getting more institutional investors. The next piece of news came out at the end of July. They told us that they would be bringing out their financials August 9th, which they did. They weren't bad, but not good enough for the investors, obviously, as you're going to see. The next two pieces of news came out at the end of July and the beginning of August. This is about them expanding their locations. I told you they've got to have brick and mortar locations to do their business. So they're building a lot of them right now. And we'll get more information about that in a minute here. Then here on the 9th of August, Tesla's corporation announces their second quarter financial results. Now this is where it all starts, folks. It's interesting the way they wrote this news press. They do have some good numbers, some good metric numbers. The company reports second quarter results above high-end guidance, above their projections, on key financial metrics. They delivered $28.5 million in revenue. They generated 34.1 gap gross margin. What gap gross margin is, is how much money are they making for every dollar invested? That's like 34%, 34 cents on every dollar. That is good. So why did the price drop 50% when this came out? Well, it's not as good as last year. Some of the numbers are up, but a lot of the numbers are down. Not by much, just a little bit. You know, a year ago, they did $32.9 million in revenue. This last quarter, they did 28.5. Everything has dropped just a little bit. But to make things even worse, they gave us a forecast, a financial outlook. They say their revenues will be between 22 and 24 million. Well, we just did 28 million and they did 32 million a year ago. So that's not very exciting. They tell us that their year over year growth is going to be shrinking. Their adjusted EBITDA is going to get bigger. So things aren't perfect with their financials, but the stock fell 50%. It's not like they're losing 50% of their revenues. It's not like they're being sued for half of everything they have. So why it fell 50% overkill. She is bouncing back right now. And I think she's going to give us more price target was just released today of $4 for this company. And then the last piece of news, which came out today, the company is an official TSA pre-check enrollment provider, and they have expanded enrollment and renewal options by opening new locations. They tell us here new enrollment locations offer convenient options for consumers to enroll in TSA pre-check at Office Depot locations in Illinois, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, Minnesota, Texas, and Washington. Telos now has 83 TSA pre-check enrollment centers open across the USA. TSA pre-check members benefit from the convenience of keeping shoes, belts, and light jackets on through the security checkpoint and keeping electronics and compliant liquids in their carry-on bags. Members typically get through security screening much faster with about 99% of members waiting less than 10 minutes at airport checkpoints nationwide. So that's what they're doing, folks. They're building up these locations so that we can go to them wherever they're at. They've already got over 20 million people in their group and it is just growing. They're working with Homeland Security. This is a decent company.
So what was the relative volume around the company today? That's a nice jump. She's gone from about 800,000 shares over the last 30 days as an average to about 3.5 million shares today. You're looking at over 450% increase on her volume. Share structure for TLS. Well, that's not bad. We're not getting a lot of information here, but the outstanding share count is low. It's under 100 million. If your outstanding share count is under 100 million, then your float's under 100 million whatever it is. And a float under 100 million is a decent float. I don't know what the float is here. I don't know what the insider zone, so I can't calculate it, but I know it's not more than the outstanding share count. So we've got ourselves a decent float, whatever it is. Market cap for the company, we are currently at about 144 million. Take a look at those financials. All right, over the last four years, what do we got here? A mixed bag of nuts. Four years ago, we were at $179 million. We know it's millions because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. She then jumped up to 242 and 21, dropped back down to 216 and 22, and really dropped at the end of 2023 to 145 million. And they got to keep about 52 million of that. So they're in the black. They're not losing money. Quarterly reports, um, they've been hanging around the mid-30s, 35, 32, 36 million for three quarters, jumped up to 41 at the end of 23, and dropped down to 29 this last quarter in February. And we just saw what June's was. That was at 28. So they dropped a little bit from the first quarter of this year. Taking a look at the balance sheet for the company. Well, they got lots of money in the bank. Don't forget to put those three zeros here as well. They've got almost $94 million in the bank, $195 million in assets. They've only got $41 million in liabilities. So we are holding positive stockholder equity here of $154 million. They're making money. The revenues have dropped. They're making profits. That's dropped too but they are holding good stockholder equity. And they've got strong metrics. Their, their profit margin is growing, which is what we really want to see. If you're going to make less money, get to keep more of it. Jumping on over to those disclosures. Well, the most recent disclosure is that 10Q, which came out on the 9th. The 8K is also the financial. It's just got less information in it. It's easier to read. Not a lot, but it is easier to read. And then we've got a bunch of Form 4s here. And to be honest, I didn't look at any of these. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's stock. And they can do that in a lot of different ways. But we're most interested when they buy them or sell them. So when you jump into these real quick, you can see whoever it is that's doing the activity, who they are in the company, the date that they're doing it, and then right here in the middle, we're going to look at that code first. If it's a P, it's a purchase. If it's an S, it's a sale. If it's any other letter, it's something else. And I'm normally not interested in anything else. They'll tell you how many shares they got and what price they bought or sold them for. And if you are curious to know what that code is, you can normally get some more information over here. Explanation of response. All right, that looks to be everything we got going on here, folks. The company is a growing business. They're working with Homeland Security. They are building out. They're up to 83 establishments right now. I do believe they want to kick it up to 500 of them by the end of 2025. They've got 24 million customers already, and it's growing. How many people fly in the country? There's a lot of business out there still waiting to be scooped up. Now, it is all about the chart. The chart took a heavy fall. Founder bottom is bouncing off of it, and I think she's got more to give, even though she's already taken some of it back. Let's go take a look at that chart together. Now we get to do some charting on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We're taking a look at ticker TLS. This is TELUS Corporation. Got her opened up to a one-day, one-year chart. Our 52-week low hit in September of $1.87, and we had a 52-week high in May of $5.03. 
Now we had a huge rip here in November going from $2.25 up to $4.40. Once she broke that 200 and got up here, for the most part, she was staying above this strong support at $3.80. She would come down here and bounce off of the 200, but always managed to come back up. And that's exactly where she was at when the financials came out and she crashed hard. Jump on down to our six month, four hour view. There's that line we were just looking at six months ago. That's exactly where she was at, exactly where she was at when she fell. So the news came out on the 9th. We were at $3.80 and she fell down to $1.90. Folks, that's 50% drop. She did bounce up a little bit and then fell down even lower, down to a buck 89. Just two cents off of our 52 week low. And off of that, she has started climbing. Our oscillators, well, you can see everything was falling and everything is now coming up. Our PPO is starting to climb. Our MACD is a crossover pushing up. And our RSI, which was way down here in the basement, has come up on top of the floor and is currently at 39. Now, I want to share something with you here. Look at my oscillators. This is my PPO, my percentage price oscillator, and this is my ADX. ADX is trend continuation. It's all about straight lines. We don't care if it's going up or down or sideways, just is it straight? What this tells me is when a trend changes, go straight up from right where this line changed, straight up, and you can see this is where our downtrend started. Where did it end? Right here. Come straight down, our line changed. What I look for is a pattern here. You see this drop right there, our PPO is falling, and my ADX is climbing. Whenever the two are coming together like that, guaranteed your price is falling. When they start separating, we got super close right there and now they're actually pulling apart from each other, guaranteed 100% your price is climbing. So that's looking good to me right now. Come on down to our 20 day, one hour view. Well, look at that. She was above her 200, minding her own business, being a good stock, bouncing off of this strong support and then come out halfway decent financials but they weren't perfect. There were a lot of shortcomings in them. And she fell all the way down here, bouncing off of that low, pushing up. She's gotten across her 20, floating on her nine day SMA, and she's still pushing up after market. Now let's get some supports and resistances in here. The way I'm going to do this is I am going to grab, first let's zoom in a little bit more. I'm going to grab my Fibonacci. I like to use my Fibonacci to find algorithmic supports and resistances. You poke the top of the big drop or big surge and then come to the other extreme, hit the bottom. What you've got here are algorithmic supports and resistances not attached to any historical price point, yet they're valid. We can trade on them. The price is going to respect them. So she came down, she's bounced off of this bottom one, she's come through the first one and she is knocking heads right here. This is at $2.64. She beat her head on that for a while. And then after market blip, she put herself right on top of it. So now we're looking at the next one at 287, then 309. Now the 287 is our 50% mark halfway. That is halfway from the top to the bottom. That is a perfect middle, a perfect algorithm. The charts like to push towards these perfect algorithms, the perfect middle. So I expect this to push up to 287 pretty easily. She'll jump up on top and that's when we're going to have to start watching her. All of these big SMAs are 20, 200 haul and 50 are still falling. So that's pushing down on the price. It's the wrong current. We need these to start turning around, creating an updraft that can pull her up. So we're going to watch this. The best we can hope for right now is that she goes sideways while all the SMAs start to turn up. Jumping on down to our five day, five minute. Flat as a pancake, right? She's going sideways, had this big drop. A lot of it happened pre-market. Soon as the bell hit, it fell some more and all day she fell. Started to turn around after market and then plunged again to this morning. 
All day, though, she has been climbing. She broke through her 200-day SMA, which, if you look, right now has gone flat. And that's a big deal because most of your big runs, most of your breakouts and surges happen when there is a flat 200. So we've got a flat 200 here, and right now our price is just starting to pull away. As this was falling, she was going sideways, waiting maybe for the 200 to go flat. And once it went flat right there, look, this is when she started climbing. She needs to get up on top of the 200 haul, and I expect some more strength. I expect her to start pushing hard. So we're running towards that 287, which I think she'll hit pretty easily. Then we're going to jog to 309. We'll have to work for that. After that, I really don't know, folks. But the bottom line here is she did fall all the way from $3.78. Now, when I calculated the, the drop, it was near 9 or 10%. The financials dropped 9 or 10%, yet the stock price fell 50%. So we could expect it to come up at least, well, I'd say 40%, but that would be 80% coming back up. Plus, you've got to keep in mind that they just got a price target of $4, which actually puts them above where she was when she fell. So there is some strong potential here for climbs through these rungs right here. And there is a possibility she could get on top. I'm thinking the very next two, 287 and 309, will be pretty easy to get. There is more information I wanted to cover with you about this company. We couldn't go to their website because every time I went there, my program blacked it out. I couldn't even get the picture to come up on my program to share with you. So they do do other services. They do have other products. So I would definitely go over to the OTC markets and just go on that first page and their website link is right there. It'll take you right to them. I do believe it's uh, telos.com. Lots of information over there, folks. And you know what I always say? The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.